Hey everybody, this is Dr. Osborne. Today I want to talk a little bit about a topic near and dear to my heart. I've actually taught this topic across the world uh, to a number of doctors uh, over the past 20 years, and that is drug-induced nutritional deficiencies. This topic is, you know, very important because many of you who are struggling with chronic autoimmune disease are actually being malnourished by the very drugs that doctors have prescribed to treat your disease. And so, you know, as you see here, common medications prescribed for the treatment of autoimmunity can cause vitamin mineral deficiencies that can hinder your immune system's capacity to function properly. Why is that important to know? Let me give you an example. Many of you uh, taking steroids, low-dose steroids for chronic autoimmune inflammation and pain understand that steroids can cause calcium deficiency and magnesium deficiency and vitamin D deficiency and low levels of these nutrients can actually cause chronic pain. So the very thing you're being treated for, which is chronic pain, um, creates a scenario whereby a new mechanism for chronic pain is created as a result of the treatment. And then you get confused and the doctors get confused because here your pain has changed, but then your pain has come back and what happens, what's generally the next step is they increase the medications or add a new medication. And so then you get into this vicious cycle. I write about this cycle in my book, No Grain, No Pain, called the prescription pain trap, where you get into this vicious cycle where you know, you're know you taking medicines to treat the disease. The medicines create nutritional deficiencies that emulate or mimic the symptoms of the disease. So you get either more medication or more of the dose of the medication, and the cycle never, ever ends. Now, in this video, I'm going to go to the next uh, slide because I just want to give you some examples. This is not a comprehensive list by any means. In essence, this is not the complete list of drug-induced nutritional deficiencies, but I wanted to give you a place to start. If you're taking blood pressure medications, there's different classes and examples that I list here, and there are different nutrients that different blood pressure medications can cause depletions in. For example, diuretics can cause vitamin B1 deficiency, vitamin B6, and vitamin C deficiency. Um, the th same thing with thiazides. Thiazides or hydrochlorothiazide can cause B vitamin deficiency, CoQ10 deficiencies. So again, um, you can see here vitamins depleted, minerals depleted. Blood pressure medications cause magnesium, calcium, potassium, zinc, sodium deficiencies. And, uh, and again, CoQ10. CoQ10 is like a B vitamin, although not a B vitamin, but it's necessary to regulate blood pressure. CoQ10 deficiency causes high blood pressure. That's the irony in all of this. That's the tragedy in all of this is that being on the medicine actually causes a deficit that creates the same disease the medicine is treating. And we'll see this pattern over and over and over again with a number of different medications. For example, cholesterol lowering drugs like statins, which are known to cause vitamin D and CoQ10 deficiency. Well, vitamin D and CoQ10 deficiency can increase your risk for developing heart disease. But the whole point of lowering your cholesterol was supposed to be to reduce your risk of developing heart disease. So again, you're not winning, right? It's it's like spinning on a hamster wheel. Diabetic medications. We see the doctors oftentimes trying to regulate blood sugar control and the medicines, the predominant medications, the glucophage or metformin, cause vitamin B12 deficiency and folate deficiency and CoQ10 deficiency. Well, we've said this about CoQ10 already. It causes an increased risk for heart disease when it's deficient. Vitamin B12 deficiency causes fatigue and folate deficiency causes fatigue. And so with anemia, the, the, both of these nutrients deficiencies can cause anemia, which leads to a fatigue. And a diabetic who's too tired to exercise is never going to lose weight and never going to regulate their blood sugar. So again, same pattern. Look at pain and anti-inflammatory medications. The NSAIDs inhibit, inhibit C, folate, and vitamin B12. And there's a new study that was recently just published that showed that NSAIDs actually create a leaky gut and microbiome dysfunction. So they actually disrupt the types of bacteria that live in your intestines that regulate inflammation. Uh, as, and then you've got other drugs like steroids. I mentioned before steroids causing you know vitamin uh, deficiencies, particularly vitamin D, but also calcium and magnesium. But there are others. You can see here A, C, D, folate, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and zinc. Heartburn medications inhibit B12 absorption and calcium absorption and zinc and iron and magnesium and B12 and folate and protein, which is a big one a lot of people don't talk about. When you block protein absorption, remember protein is the fuel source for your muscles. It's the fuel source for your immune system. And when you block its absorption long enough, you can actually create immunosuppression or immunodeficiency problems, which can lead to a host, a battery of different issues that are associated also with autoimmunity. And then hormone replacement medicines, especially like your oral contraceptives. A lot of doctors will give 
Even the bioidenticals, this is a question I get oftentimes, well, okay, Primarin, Yasmin, and some of the other estrogen-based medicines, but what about bioidentical estrogen-based hormones? Yes, they do cause vitamin mineral deficiencies. So if you're on them and you're not looking and having these drugs, uh, where you're not these drugs, but these nutrients measured to see that you're maintaining adequate status, then, then that's a, that can become a very, very big problem. You look at hormone replacement, look at all the B vitamins, 2, 3, 6, and 12, folate, which is vitamin B9, vitamin C, magnesium, zinc, selenium. Look at all these and, and go back and watch some of my videos on nutrition in the thyroid. Go back and watch some of my videos on nutrition and bone health, nutrition and heart health, and you'll see that each of these nutritional deficiencies can actually, again, create illnesses in and of themselves. So if you're taking drugs to mask symptoms and you're creating nutritional deficiencies that create the same kinds of symptoms that the drugs are supposed to be treating, ask yourself and ask your doctor, where are we winning? Where are we overcoming the illness? And think about root cause resolution. Think about functional medicine, which is, why do I have the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the diabetes, the pain, the heartburn, or the hormone imbalance? Not what can I take artificially to manipulate my own chemistry to put myself into a lulled state of uh, complacency, but what can I do? How can I empower myself and how can I overcome these situations naturally without having to artificially manipulate my chemistry and create false complacency? So hopefully this is helpful for you. You know what to do next. Click to the left to watch some more videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure if you know somebody battling with these medicines, make sure you share this video and hashtag save 100 million lives. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten-Free Society and drpeterosborne.com. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.